Good day class. Welcome back to our discussion on uh, rational functions. I am your lecturer for this video, Engineer Peter Benjamin Obiano. This video is the second video on solving rational equations and rational inequalities. We're still under chapter 2 of our discussion on functions and their graphs. In this video, our topic outline will be, first, let's have a review on generating rational functions then, a short review on solving rational equations. Lastly, our main topic, let us now solve worded problems involving rational equations. At the end of the video, I hope that we will be able to solve worded problems involving rational equations. Now, a review naman natin later, pero para hindi tayo masyadong mahirapan, before watching the video, sana by this time, alam na nating mag-formulate ng sarili nating mga rational functions. Ito po ay na-discuss natin noong LBV GMAT 1-2.1a, our very first video on rational functions. Also, I hope that by this time, alam na rin nating mag-solve ng rational equations. Ito naman po ay na-discuss natin doon sa video before this one. That is LBVG Math 1-2.3a. Alright, let's now have our review first on how to formulate rational functions. Again, ito po ay na-discuss natin sa pinakaunang video natin on rational functions. So, diretso na lang tayo sa steps. Ano? So, Marie, how to formulate rational functions? First, identify the given constants the variables to be used, and what the variables represent. So, titignan natin ano yung uh, mga ibinigay na constants, ano yung binigay na variables na gagamitin natin, at ano yung e-represent nila. Tapos, hindi ba kung walang ibinigay na variable, then tayo ang mag-a-assign nun. Next, make an equation that solves whatever is required by the problem. Take note that sometimes we are going to use Lessons, equations, or formulas from other subjects na natutunan natin dati pa, like geometry or physics. Also, if the initial function has more than one variable, you need to express all the other variables in terms of the variable required by the problem. Lastly, after making our function, after making our equation, let us now substitute the necessary constants and variables that were mentioned on the problem. Alright, so para lang uh, talagang ma-refresh tayo, let's just have one exercise. Alright, review exercise 1. Given a rectangular lot with an area of 500 square meters, make a function which we will call f of w, representing the length of the lot in terms of the width of the rectangle represented by the variable w. So again, step 1, let us identify the given constants, the variables to be used, and what those variables represent. So again, what are the given? Alam natin na yung lote is hugis rectangle. Binigay din sa atin yung area. So sabi dito that the area of the lot is 500 square meters. Next, sinabi na yung function na f of w will represent the length of the lot. Now, what is W naman? W ay ito. Sabi naman dito, W will represent the width of the lot. So, ito yung mga ibinigay sa atin na gagamitin nating mga variables and constants. Alright, step 2. Let us make an equation that solves whatever is required by the problem. Now, ano ba ang hinihingi ng problem? So, sabi ng problem, we will make a function representing the length of the lot in terms of the width. Gagawa daw tayo ng function na nagre-represent ng width ng lote natin. Now, paano natin gagawin yung function na iyon? Now, since ito ay uh, width, binigyan tayo ng area, hugis rectangle daw, eh di syempre, para may paghuhugutan tayo ng function, balik tayo sa geometry. 
from geometry, specifically four rectangles, hindi ba? Ang area is length multiplied by the width. Now, gusto natin na makabuo ng isang function na nagsusolve ng length in terms of width. So, ang sinusolve mo ay length, ang isa substitute mo sa function mo ay width. So, ang goal natin ngayon sa formula na ito is dapat length lamang yung maiwan sa isang side at yung width ay nasa kabilang side ng equation. So, again, isip ka ng paraan para yung length nasa isang side ng equation at yung width nasa isang side naman ng equation. Well, we can do this. We can divide both sides of the equation by the width. So, of course, if you do that, yung width dito sa my right side will be cancelled out. May iwan ngayon yung ating formula. Now, we have length of the rectangle that is equal to the area divided by the width. So, nakagawa tayo ng equation to solve our problem. Lastly, after making the equation, we can now just substitute the necessary constants and variables that were mentioned on the problem. So again, kanina nakuha natin itong equation na ito. Length is equal to the area divided by the width. Alright, so palitan na natin itong mga to ng mga variables at constants. Ano ba ang sabi sa tanong? Sabi sa tanong, yung length will be represented by the function f of w. Kaya ilalagay natin dito yung f of w. Let's now go to the area. Sabi sa given, ang area is 500 square meters. Kaya ang ipapalit natin sa area will be 500. Lastly, sabi din sa given, yung width will be represented by the variable W. Kaya, ang ilalagay naman natin sa baba ay W. And from this, we now have our function. So, this is now our function representing the length in terms of the width of the rectangle. So, this is now our answer. I hope na-refresh tayo ano, kung paano tayo gumawa ng sarili nating functions. Next review, i-review naman natin ulit how to solve rational equations. Ito po ay na-discuss naman natin last uh, video. So I hope medyo uh, fresh pa ito sa atin. Alright, how to solve rational equations ulit. Step number one, get the least common denominator of the rational expressions. Next, multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. Simplify and transpose all terms to the left side of the equation. Third, solve for the roots of the equation na nakuha natin sa step 2. Fourth, remove the roots that are extraneous solution with the original equation. Ano ulit ang extraneous solution, di ba? Ito yung mga solution na magsasatisfy doon sa simplified equation kaso hindi siya magsasatisfy sa original equation. Siyempre, di ba, ang gagawin natin, kahit na pwede siyang solution ng simplified equation, pero kung hindi siya pwede sa original, eh hindi natin iyon tatanggapin. Anyways, step 5, after removing the extraneous solutions, kung meron man, yung mga naiwan, yun na yung solution ng ating rational equation. Now, if ever man, you want to be extra sure of your answer, we have an optional step 6. Check if our answer satisfies the rational equation. So, ito po yung mga steps natin in solving rational equations. Again, to uh, better review this uh, part, let's have a simple problem. Review exercise number 2, solve for x in the given equation. You have x minus 4 over x, so that is equal to 5. Alright, so diba ang step 1 natin is get the least common denominator of the rational expressions. Ano ang least common denominator natin? So you have x minus 4 over x on the left side and 5 
on the right side. Well, ito madali lang, hindi ba? Ang least common denominator ng rational expressions natin will be x. So, that's it. So, the LCD is x. Next, ano ang gagawin natin? Yung LCD, imumultiply natin both sides of the equation. So, yung LCD na x, imultiply natin on both sides of the equation. Of course, x minus 4 over x times x, x will cancel out. So, ang may iwan lamang sa left side will be x minus 4. 5 times x will give us 5x. So, ito ngayon yung nasa right side ng ating equation. Now, after multiplying, what's next? Simplify if possible pa. Lastly, transpose all terms to the left side of the equation. Okay, so i-transfer natin lahat ng terms sa left side so that yung right side natin will be simply 0. Okay, so ilipat lang natin yung 5x sa kabila. So magiging minus 5x na siya. Tapos let's just simplify the left side. x minus 5x will give us negative 4x and then minus 4. So this is now our simplified equation. Negative 4x minus 4. That is equal to 0. Step number 3, solve for the roots of the resulting equation. So again, ito yung ating uh, simplified equation. Kunin natin yung roots nito, which is hindi naman ganun kahirap. So una, transpose ko yung negative 4 sa kabila. So magiging positive 4 na siya. And then, let us divide both sides by negative 4. So makakancel out yung negative 4 sa left side. May iwan ngayon yung sagot natin na x equals, of course, 4 over negative 4. That is negative 1. So, this is now the answer of our simplified equation. Kaya lang, wag mo muna nating sabihin na ang sagot niya ay x is negative 1. I-check muna natin. Baka kasi yung nakuha nating sagot ay extraneous. So again, based on the original equation, balik tayo sa glit dito, ano? Gusto nating iwasan ang division by zero. Ang tanong, ano ang x na dapat mong iwasan? Again, iiwasan natin yung magiging zero, yung denominator. Well, the denominator is just x. So, ibig sabihin nito, hindi pwede na ang value ng x ay 0. Again, hindi pwedeng 0 ito kasi magkakaroon tayo ng division by 0. So, based on the original equation, x must not be equal to 0. From the previous solution, from the previous step, we found out that x is negative 1. Again, ang nakuha nating sagot ay x negative 1. Ang hindi pwedeng gamitin x ay 0. Since hindi sila magkaparehas, pwede na ang value ng x dito ay negative 1. So therefore, x is negative 1 is not an extraneous solution. So lastly, the remaining roots will be the solution of the rational equation. So again, from our previous solution, nalaman natin x is negative 1. Nalaman din natin na to avoid division by zero, dapat yung denominator mo, which is simply x, it must not be equal to zero. Again, ang hindi pwede ay zero, ang nasolve natin ay negative one, walang kaso, walang problema. Therefore, x is negative one is not an extraneous solution. Therefore, the answer of our uh, rational equation is x is negative 1. So, ganun lang. So, I hope naalala nyo pa itong mga to. So, again, okay na na hanggang dito lang muna tayo. But if you want to be extra sure, you can check if you want to check if our answer satisfies the rational equation. So, again, our answer is x equals negative 1. So, i-substitute natin yung x na negative 1 to the rational equation. And check if the rational equation is satisfied. So, lahat ngayon ng x nito ay gagawin nating negative 1. We will have this. So, negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 1 
is 5, which is equal to the right side, which is also 5. As you can see, our rational equation is satisfied. Thus, we conclude x equals negative 1 is the correct answer. So, ganun lang. So, uh, in order to uh, solve rational equations, pakitandaan na lang po yung mga steps natin. Alright, ngayong na-review na natin kung paano gumawa ng sarili nating equation at kung paano mag-solve ng rational equations. Let us now solve worded problems involving rational equations. Question number one. The numerator of a fraction is 2 less than the denominator. If 5 is subtracted from both the numerator and the denominator, the resulting fraction is one half. Find the original fraction. Now, minsan, binigay yung equation. Minsan naman, hindi ibibigay yung equation. Of course, bago tayo makapag-solve ng rational equation, dapat may rational equation ka muna. Ang problema nga lang, Base sa pagkakastate ng tanong, wala pa tayong rational equation. Kaya, tayo muna ang gagawa ng sarili nating equation. So, i-apply natin yung process kung paano gumawa ng sarili nating equation. Alright, what is given? So, sinabi na yung original fraction has a numerator that is 2 less than the denominator. Yung value daw ng numerator ay mas mababa ng dalawa kesa sa denominator. Tapos, gagawa daw tayo ng bagong fraction. At para magawa mo daw yung bagong fraction, anong sabi? Magsusubtract ka ng 5 both sa numerator at sa denominator. Tapos, sabi din sa given, yung new fraction na nakuha natin ay magiging equal sa 1 half. So, ito yung mga alam natin. Ito yung mga given na information sa problem. Okay. Walang variable na sinabi. Walang variable na sinabi. Walang sinabi na x is denominator, y is a denominator, ganun, ganun. Wala. So, tayo ang mag-assume. Uh, tayo ang magse-set nun. Okay? So, let's say uh, we do this. Let's say x is the numerator. So, sabihin na natin, c numerator will be represented by the variable x. Paano ngayon si denominator? Alright. Ano bang sabi? Sabi sa given, yung numerator ay mas mababa ng dalawa kesa sa denominator. So, ano man yung denominator mo, laging mas mababa ng dalawa, yun yung numerator mo. So, paano ngayon kukunin si denominator? So, again ha, ang ginawa nating x si numerator. Si numerator ay laging mas mababa ng dalawa kesa sa denominator. If that's the case, ano ngayon si denominator? So, syempre, Kung si numerator ay mas mababa ng dalawa kesa sa denominator, ibig sabihin nito, yung denominator ay mas mataas ng dalawa kesa sa numerator. So therefore, the denominator can be represented by x plus 2. Again ha, sabi sa problem, yung numerator mas mababa ng dalawa. If that's the case, then yung denominator ay mas mataas ng dalawa. Alright? So, yun yan. So, if x is the numerator, x plus 2 is our denominator. Ibig sabihin nito, from this, we can say na, ayusin lang natin, yung original fraction ay x over x plus 2. Since alam na natin yung original fraction, pwede na natin kunin yung new fraction. Ano ba raw yung bagong fraction? So sabi dito, yung bagong fraction ay makukuha mo by subtracting 5 from both the numerator and the denominator. 
So, mag minus 5 tayo sa numerator at sa denominator. So, you'll have x minus 5. Ito na yung bagong numerator. And you have x plus 2 minus 5. Ito na yung bagong denominator. Simplify lang natin yung denominator. We will get x minus 5 over x minus 3. Kaya lang, ano pa ang sinabi? Sabi sa bandang dulo, yung bagong fraction, ito ay magiging equal vow sa 1 half. Kaya si x minus 5 over x minus 3, i-equate natin ito sa 1 half. So, ganun lang. So, that is how we get our rational equation. Now, ano bang gustong hanapin ng tanong? Sabi ng tanong, hanapin daw natin yung original fraction. So, find the original fraction. Now, from the given, we know that the original fraction is x over x plus 2. So, ito yung original fraction. As you can see, bago mo mahanap yung original fraction, kailangan mong hanapin muna yung value ng x. So, in short, in order to solve for the original fraction, we need the value ng x. E saan natin kukunin yung x? Kukunin natin yung x doon sa new fraction. Paano? Kanina, di ba, nakuha natin tong equation na ito. Yung x minus 5 over x minus 3 ay equal sa 1 half. So, gamit yung equation na ito, dyan natin kukunin yung x. So, yun lang yan. So, kunin natin yung x dito and then ano man yung nakuha mong x, isa substitute natin sa my original fraction. Okay? So, that is our solution. So, again, using the new fraction, solve for x. After solving for x, we can now get the original fraction by substituting whatever x we got here dito. Okay? So, let's now apply yung how to solve rational fractions natin. So, diba? Using the new fraction, solve for x. So, we know that the new fraction, x minus 5 over x minus 3, is equal to 1 half. Alright, so let's apply yung how to solve rational equations. Diba? Start is getting the LCD. Ang LCD nito is x minus 3. So, let's multiply x minus 3. Of course, if you do that, x minus 3 cancels out. So, ang maiiwan lang sa left side ay x minus 5. Yung right side naman ay magiging 1 half times x minus 3. I-distribute ko lang yung 1 half sa right side. So, makakawan kayo ng 1 half x minus 3 halves. Lahat ng terms ay ilipat ko sa left side. So, yung 1 half x, pag nilipat sa kabila, magiging negative 1 half. Yung negative 3 halves, pag nilipat sa kabila, magiging positive 3 halves. Let us combine like terms. x minus 1 half x will give us positive 1 half x. Negative 5 plus 3 halves will give us negative 7 halves. And then from here, kunin na lang natin yung value ng x. Pwede na yung negative 7 halves, ilipat mo sa kabila. So magkakawin ka ng 1 half x is equal to 7 halves. And then to get rid of 1 half sa my left side, we can multiply both sides by 2. So, if you multiply both sides by 2, 2 here will cancel out. Ganon din dito, 2 will also cancel out. Makukuha natin ang value ng x, which is equal to 7. And there you have it. So, gamit yung new fraction, nakuha na natin yung value ng x, which is 7. Ngayong alam na natin kung ano ang value ng x, we can now solve for the original fraction. So, again, from the previous step, we solve that x is 7. Now, from the given, again, the original fraction is x over x plus 2. I substitute lang natin yung x na 7. So, you'll get 7 over 7 plus 2. Of course, if you uh, solve the denominator, we will get 9. Therefore, the original fraction is 7 over 9. And this is now our answer. So, yun lang. So, that is uh, the solution for the first exercise. Now, of course, if we want to be extra sure, sige, i-check natin. So, alam natin ng original fraction ay 7 over 9. Now, there are many ways to check if tama nga ito or hindi. Ito na lang yung gagawin natin. Ano? So, uh, mula sa 7 over 9, 
titignan natin, totoo ba na kapag nag minus 5 ka sa both numerator and denominator, ang lalabas mang sagot ay 1 half? So, i-confirm natin na ang bagong fraction nga ay mag-i-equal sa 1 half. Again, paano kunin yung bagong fraction, di ba? Magma-minus 5 ka lang sa numerator denominator. So, 7 minus 5 is 2. 9 minus 5 is 4. Simplify this one. You'll get 1 half. And there you have it. Na-confirm nga natin na kung nag-minus 5 ka sa original, makukuha mo si 1 half. Therefore, our conclusion now is, Tama yung sagot natin na ang original fraction ay 7 over 9. Alright, so that is for our first exercise. So, the given conditions were satisfied. So, sure nang ito yung sagot. So, I hope naging malino po ang solution natin. Let's try another one. A sports car traveled 250 kilometers while a truck traveled 200 kilometers. The sports car is 20 kilometer per hour faster than the truck. If both traveled within the same time, how fast is the truck? Alright, so what is given? We know that the sports car traveled 250 kilometers. The truck traveled 200 kilometers. Alam natin na yung sports car is 20 kilometers per hour faster than the truck. So, ibig sabihin nito, ano man ang speed ng truck, dagdagan mo ng 20 kilometers per hour, yun yung speed ng sports car. Sinabi din sa problem na yung sports car at yung truck, they traveled at the same time. Na, walang sinabing mga variables ulit. Kaya, tayo ang mag-a-assign. Tawagin na lang natin na S of C, yung speed of the car, at tawagin kong S of T, yung speed ng truck. Again, you can use any variable that you want. It is up to you. Alright, what is needed? Ano ang gusto ng tanong? Ang gusto ng tanong is, how fast is the truck? So, we need to get the speed of the truck. We need to solve for S of T. Ngayong alam na natin kung anong kailangan natin, paano natin itong isosolve. Again, Let's go back from our previous subjects. We know that speed is distance over time. Okay? So, I hope alam nyo to. Again, kung hindi mo to alam, unfortunately, wala. Hindi mo masosolve yung problem. Now, ano ang susunod nating gagawin? Balik tayo sa problem. Ano? So, balik tayo sa problem. Tapos, basahin natin ng maigi. Alin sa speed... Distance or time ang may relationship between the car and the truck. So, alin sa tatlong to? Speed, distance, time. Yung pwede nating maging basihan ng relationship ng car at ng truck. Mababasa natin, it is the time. Bakit yung time? Sabi sa may bandang dulo, if both the truck and the car traveled within the same time. So, alam natin na yung time of travel ng car at yung time of travel ng truck parehas. So, yun yung sinasabi ko na yung time, siya yung maglilink sa truck at sa car. Since time ang magiging link ng car at ng truck, ang gagawin natin sa equation na ito, let's rewrite this in such a way na time yung nasa isang side at lahat ay nasa kabilang side. So again, ang goal natin ngayon dito, time lang yung nasa isang side, the rest ay nasa kabilang side. Of course, madali lang yun. We can just do cross multiplication. Let us cross multiply speed and time. Magpapalit lang naman sila ng position, magiging ganito siya. So time is distance over speed. Now, Kunin natin ngayon yung time of travel ng car. So again, time is distance over speed. Yung time ng car, time of travel ng car, tawagin ko na lang siya na time C. Alam natin na ang distance traveled ng car is 250. At sabi natin kanina, yung speed ng car will be represented by S of C. Therefore, the time of travel for the car will be represented by 250 over S of C. 
Ganyan din ang gagawin natin sa truck. For the truck, time is distance over speed pa rin. Para naman sa time ng truck, I will use time t. Sabi sa given, ang distance traveled ng truck is 200 kilometers. So, nandito siya. So, the truck traveled 200 kilometers. So, ilagay natin dito, 200. Tapos, kanina, sinabi natin na yung speed ng truck will be represented by S of t. So, nakuha na natin ngayon yung equation para sa time for the car and the time of travel for the truck. What's next? So again, nakagawa tayo ng equation for the time of travel for the car and the time of travel for the truck. Ano ulit ang sabi sa tanong? Yung time of travel ng car, yung 250 over SC, ay equal sa time of travel ng truck, which is 200 over SD. So again, itong equation na ito at yung equation daw na ito, equal sila. O di, gawin natin yan. Time traveled by the car is equal to the time traveled by the truck, which is equal to 250 over S of C, that is equal to 200 over S of T. Alright, this is now our initial equation. Kaya lang, di ba, may dalawang variables tayo, SC at ST. Dapat, isa lang yung maiwan para makapag-solve tayo. Alright. Ano ang pwede pa nating makuha mula sa problem? Anong sabi? The sports car is 20 km per hour faster than the truck. Ano man daw yung speed ng truck mag plus 20 kph ka, yun yung speed ng car. So therefore, from what is given, we can say that the speed of the car, SC, is equal to the speed of the truck plus 20. So, the speed of the car is equal to the speed of the truck plus 20. Ang gawin natin ngayon, itong ST plus 20 na ito, yun yung ipapalit natin sa SC. So, if we do that, we can now have our final equation. You have 250 over ST plus 20, that is equal to 200 over S of T. And then, gawin na lang natin, let us now solve for S of T. Alright. So, uh, let's apply the process in solving rational equations. Ano ang uh, least common denominator ng ST plus 20 at ST? Siyempre, it's ST plus 20 times ST. So, this is the LCD. Alright. ST plus 20 times ST multiplied by this one. What will happen? Maka-cancel out. Yung ST plus 20. So, ang maiiwan lang dito ay ST. So, ST multiplied by 250. So, the left side will be 250 ST. Next, 200 over ST multiplied by ST plus 20 ST. Ang makakancel out naman dito, yung S of T. Kaya, yung right side natin will become 200 ST plus 20. I-distribute ko lang yung 200 ST plus 20. So, you'll get 200 ST plus 4,000. Ilipat ko yung ST sa kabila, you will get 250 ST minus 200 ST, that is equal to 4,000. 250 minus 200 will give us 50. So, we now have 50 S of T equals 4,000. Para ang maiwan lamang sa left side ay S of T, let us divide both sides by 50. Of course, yung 50 dito magka-cancel out. Samantalang sa my right side, 4,000 over 50 will give us 80. And, yun na. Nasolve na natin. Therefore, the speed of the truck is 80 kilometers per hour. So, yun na yun. Nakuha na natin yung speed ng truck. So again, okay lang na hanggang dito na lang yung solution natin. Pero, kung gusto mong maging extra sure, sige, i-check natin. Nasolve natin ng speed ng truck is 80 kph. Again, there are many ways to check if the answer is correct. Ang gagawin ko, i-confirm natin na yung time of travel ng car at yung time of travel ng truck the same. Balikan natin yung uh, mga equations natin. Alright? So, uh, di ba? Sabi natin, yung speed ng car 
ay mas mabilis ng 20. So, speed of the car is equal to the speed of the truck plus 20. Ang speed of the truck is 80 kph plus 20. So, ang speed ng car is 100 km per hour. So, kunin natin yung mga time of travels nila. Again, time is distance over speed. For the sports car, again, distance traveled is 250 at yung speed natin is 100. So, ang masusolve natin na time is 2.5 hours. Gawin din natin yun sa truck. So, again, time is distance over speed. Sabi sa given, ang distance traveled ng truck is 200. Tapos, yung nasolve natin na speed ng truck, 80 kph. Solving for the time, we will get 2.5 hours. As you can see, the time of travel for the car and the time of travel for the truck ay parehas na 2.5 hours. Therefore, our condition is satisfied. Since sa satisfy yung given condition, we now conclude tama yung sagot natin na ang speed of the truck is 80 kph. So, ganun lang. So, I hope na clear na po sa atin paano mag-solve ng worded problems involving rational equations. Alright, that's the end of the uh, video. I hope that we were able to learn how to solve worded problems involving rational equations. Don't worry if nabitin kayo, magkakaroon pa tayo ng uh, other opportunities to solve rational equations sa mga next videos natin. So, we're done with LBV 1-2.3b. Our next lesson will be on 1-2.3c. If you recall, 1-2.3a and 1-2.3b focused on rational equations. For 1-2.3c and 1-2.3 naman, ang magiging focus naman natin sa next two videos will be on rational inequalities. Again, if you want uh, additional learnings, extra questions to work on, you may refer to our Quex book on general mathematics, particularly chapter 2. God bless po and see you on the next video.